Hello friends, today I, Mohinak Shah, is going to present a brief description of interstitial free IF bake hardening BH dual phase DP trip and tape steels. So first of all, I shall start discussing about the interstitial free steels. The composition of the interstitial free steels as we all know that they are the low manganese steels. That is, in other words, they contain manganese less than 0.35% and all these percent are in terms of weight percent. So, uh, the amount of carbon in IF steels is less than 0.008%. The amount of nitrogen less than 0.005%, uh, silicon less than 0.3%, aluminium less than 0.07%, titanium almost equal to 0.1%. Besides, there is also niobium which is less than 0.04%. As the name suggests, that interstitial free steels do not have any interstitial atom to strain the solid iron atoms. Generally, about 40 parts per million of nitrogen is used for the interstitial free steels. Now, before studying more about the interstitial free steels, now let's discuss about the role of various microalloying elements in the interstitial free steels. The first microalloying element that we will be discussing is silicon, which is required to prevent the carbide formation as it suppresses the activity of carbon. The titanium used along with 40 ppm nitrogen, thereby forming titanium nitride in small amounts leads to grain growth control and in larger amounts it leads to precipitation hardening. Aluminium is one of those microalloying elements which is responsible for increasing the martensitic start temperature in the TTT that is time temperature transformation or we might also say the IT isothermal transformation uh, curve or the CCT curves that is the continuous cooling transformation curves because it increases the rate of nucleation and growth of ferrite and perlite. Besides niobium is used for precipitation hardening and increase in recrystallization temperature. Now, if steels have relatively coarse ferrite grains, and so following the hall pitch behavior, uh, we cannot expect high yield strength from the if steels, as sigma bias, that is yield strength, is found to be inversely proportional to small t raised to the power half, where small d is the grain diameter. Then, high Langford coefficient is possessed by the if steels, and high Langford coefficient refers to high R value or high plastic strain ratio. So, the if steels have high formability and are the extra drawing quality steels or the EDQ steels. The basically the depending upon the formability of different grades of steels, there are three different types of drawing qualities of steels. The first uh, type of steel uh, is termed as the drawing quality steel. The second is the DDQ that is the deep drawing quality steel. And at the same time, the steel which has the highest formability uh, is also known as the extra drawing quality steels. We should not say the, uh, the, the highest formability, rather these steels have very high formability. That is, the EDQ steels generally do possess the high formability. At the same time, for the if steels, there is high crystallization anisotropy going to high R value. So they have strong recrystallization texture. So now what is texture? It is the arrangement of unit cells in space. In order to remove interstitials from the solution, the carbon and nitrogen are added to the if steels as titanium has high tendency 